Put on your detective hats because today I'm going to walk you through a mystery. Earlier this year, one of our robots was having a confusing problem. The power supply would just randomly give up. There were no logs or indications of what was going on. It took our entire combined data analytics pipeline to figure out what the root cause was. I'm Alex Thiel. I'm a co-founder at Urban Machine. We build robots that salvage lumber by removing nails, screws, and staples from wood. I'm going to walk you through our observability stack, which helps us debug remote issues and solve these kinds of mysteries. Let's jump right into it. Every second that a robot fleet operates, we are generating thousands of data points. Everything from low-level data, for example, millisecond precision data of the individual positions of every joint on a 10 to 15 axis robot cell, up to the high-level data, like how many nails have we picked, where were they, how many boards have we cleaned, what were their dimensions. Everything is saved to a database on the edge and eventually replicated to the cloud so we can have all the data of all our robot fleets in one place. So back to this mysterious problem. We were having an issue with a machine that we call the cooker. This machine's job is basically to drive an XY gantry that holds an induction coil. This coil drives up to a fastener that we detect using cameras, and it superheats it without even touching it, just using the power of induction. It takes about four seconds. It burns the fibers of the wood around the fastener so that they're easier to pull out. This is what lets us pull out screws. Now, we were having this issue where when 2x4s were on their side, specifically 2x4s, and only when they're on their side, the power supplies for these induction coils would fail. They just would fault. We couldn't figure it out. As with any problem, the first thing we looked at was the logs. Our logging stack is powered by a few technologies. Promtail, Loki, Grafana, they all work together to make this beautiful interface, which lets us easily search, filter, or view any of the logs from any of the computers in our entire fleet. The logs gave us a hint that the fault was only happening when the coils were powered on. That makes sense. So we took some timestamps from the logs and went to one of my favorite tools that we've built, the Action Insights Dashboard. This dashboard lets you see the start and stop times of every ROS action that's run in the system at any point. For example, you can look at camera cooker left, vision stream. This shows all of the times when the vision processing algorithms are running and when they're not running. Or you can look at cooker left toaster power coil. You can actually see every single time that we've powered the coils for the left toaster. The really cool thing is you can then zoom in. So let's say we're interested in this period of time. Just like that, you can zoom in and pause recording. You can also switch stations to see what the picker was doing at that time. Or you can select specific actions and filter for just those. So at that point in time, we looked at when the coil was being powered and we zoomed in really close and even closer. What this told us is that the left toaster and the right toaster weren't necessarily powering their coil at the exact same time, but they did tend to be faulting when the coils were both on. The debugging journey finally ended when we took a look at our digital twin. We looked at those timestamps and we observed more carefully that failures tended to be happening when these coils were physically close together, not just in time, but in space. We found out that the coils were interfering with each other. The actual induction from one coil to the next was causing some kind of frequency error and the power supplies were freaking out because the actual current running through the system was different than what it was actually putting into it. So basically one coil was powering another one wirelessly. After that, we added a few features to automatically recover from these kinds of errors and prevent the coils from being too close to each other when they turn on. If you're building robots in production and you want to have a similar stack, here's how we did it. As I mentioned before, we used Promptail, Loki, and Grafana to facilitate logging. Our whole stack runs under Docker and for the metrics, this is how the actions dashboard is powered. We used a InfluxDB database, that's a time series database that works really well for high throughput metrics data streams. And we also visualize that through Grafana. So that means that we could tie together different actions to the logs from those actions in a single place. Then we embedded different Grafana graphs directly into our user interface dashboard. Inside the ROS stack, different nodes could easily publish messages saying, hey, I wanna save this data. I just picked a nail. I just cleaned a piece of wood. So they would publish to a telemetry node that we created, and then that would save to the server. We then use InfluxDB's built-in replication features to replicate local edge databases to the cloud. That means that as we scale our robotic fleet, all of our metrics are already on the cloud, available, and backed up. On top of this technology stack, we were able to build lots of interesting dashboards that let us introspect into every part of our pipeline. For example, high throughput data like our vision stream. A single vision pipeline is built up of 10 steps, for example, and each of those steps has to be running at a certain frequency in order to work properly. This is our Timer Insights dashboard. It basically shows us any step of the vision pipeline or any pipeline that requires high throughput 
and tells us if it's running fast, slow, or at just the right speed. For example, I can dig into an exact minute in time and see how fast the inference was running for the left camera. If you're in the middle of building your own robotics data stack right now, I don't necessarily recommend building your own. It seems like there's a lot more competition in the space these days. For example, Foxglove seems to have a pretty good offering. I've also taken a look at formant.io. They seem to have something pretty good there. Do your own research and find tools that work for you. If you're looking for an open source solution, I just wanted to plug a project that Urban Machine is currently working on. I'm spending a lot of time on this. Create Ross App is a template for building production-ready, containerized robotics deployments. The idea is that with one command, you can build, launch, and have a raw stack ready to go. It already comes pre-built with a ROS nodes container, a Grafana container for visualization, Promptil, and Loki for logging. So a lot of what I've mentioned in the video is already here. I'd love to get some feedback from nerdy engineers like myself. So take a look at it. I'm using it for my own personal projects too. I know I went super in the weeds on this video, so please, if you like that kind of content, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know. Reach out through email or LinkedIn and check out our open source projects. Bye.